twenty dollars. Yeah, like you can. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, I did. No, go back. What do you mean? I I ain't get it. <laughs> Are you fucking me? <laughs> They really fuck you over with that yeah. one though. Come on. Alrighty, so I've been getting some questions recently about like some just normal lifestyle stuff because honestly, if I'm being completely honest, my life has never been this exciting. So I asked you guys over on my Twitter and my Instagram to ask me questions about things that you had questions about. So let's hop right into it. Um, I'm gonna answer this Twitter question first because it was really just fucking, just fucking kiss. It was a really good one. How did you get into partnership management? Is it something you had always wanted to do or did it just kind of happen. So long story short, my first job working in this whole social media business space was working with Wild Bills as their social media manager. I got that job while I was still a senior in high school and I got it through Cliff. I'm going to get into a full story about how I got to where I am exactly a little bit later on in this video. As their social media manager, I worked on making content for them for their Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. But then later down the line, me and Russo ended up creating the partnership program and I pretty much developed that from like like it's very early stages and I still continue to work on it today. So right now as their partnership manager, I pretty much manage that along with onboarding new creators and making sure everything's going smoothly on that side of things. I still do a lot of their in-house photography and videography stuff and some of their content production for social media, but my main role is taking care of those sponsored creators and I really do enjoy it because it's something that I worked very hard to start and I want to make sure it continues to be amazing. Next fucking question. What is your favorite part of the creative process maybe this will come to a shock for some of you guys but it really shouldn't i really enjoy editing the most genuinely my favorite part of the creative process coming up with the idea and seeing the finished product is super cool don't get me wrong but there's something about being that grit being in the lab being in the fucking stew cooking up an absolute heater <laughs> And he has everything but the last letter. I thought I got it right and I what, how exited is it not the app. train or trail. Oh, those are exactly what I guessed. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. how is it not that? Dude, I'm not putting a Q at the end. <laughs> just, just, why would that, you put the Q? Why would you put a Q? A Y? Trey. <laughs> Trait. Did you get it? It's a T. <laughs> you got it. Moving on to the next question, I have Mikey here because I also kind of wanted to get his opinion on it. That question is, what is it like being a content creator? What's it like being an influencer? What is it like being a content creator? If I'm being completely honest, it's pretty fun. I can't really complain that much. Some really cool opportunities have 100% come out of it. And I've gotten to work with a lot of amazing people and amazing brands. And I'm sure Mikey can attest to that. No, 100%. But I feel, although, I feel like there is a struggle with it right now. Because I feel like since it's so new, and like, yeah, the market is saturated, but like, there is no way of like, anyone telling you how to do this. It is very much like, let me create something for myself and like, make it my own way. So I guess like, it is hard because it's like you're constantly trying to find your own way of like, doing shit. But that's also the beauty in it, I feel, because like, you can just do what you want but yeah being a creator i've been making content for like eight years now we're coming up on like i think my eight or nine year youtube anniversary which is kind of stupid to me final question that i'm gonna answer from the questions that i've been asked and it is what are the most valuable things you've learned from john carlo so for those of you guys who don't know i fucking work for blazendary that's the gag i don't think i've literally ever spoke of this but i've worked with john carlo now full time since the beginning of this year basically i think it was the beginning of february basically i've worked with him this year as his production assistant, whether that's working on his main channel, his Pokemon channel, his store stuff, whatever it really is, I'm there working on it with him. One thing that I have learned from Giancarlo that I know I will continue to take with me. When it comes to social media, my demeanor has definitely changed since working with him. How I approach my emails, my general creative process, and overall demeanor when it comes to social media has definitely changed since working with Giancarlo. I would say it's taken a huge step forward and I've developed not only as a person, but as a creator tenfold. So I'll always be appreciative appreciative for that so Chani if you're watching this fucking video man <laughs> that, that was good last question before I get into the story time and I got this question a lot how do you start working in the social media world so if I'm being completely honest if you really are interested in getting into working on the business side of social media there are a few things you should know about getting 
work. I'm gonna speak from experience here and then Mikey's also gonna be uploading a video where he speaks from his experience. So you guys should check that out once it's up. Check out our social medias. They'll be linked in the description below. Ah! Oh my God. <laughs> from my experience, how I got work. One, getting my work out there and making sure I'm posting frequently and quality content. A lot of my examples of work at the beginning were very much my own examples of work. I didn't have previous clients to show people and be like, this is work that I've done. So I was really working with what I had. And that's a big part of this whole thing. If you didn't get that, you kind of have to work with what you have. What she was working with was videos that she edited for herself. And that was all like a portfolio that she was proud of. If you're looking at your stuff and you're like, working with what I have is hard because I don't really like what I have. Well, that's on you. Truly everything about this is way more in your power. This is all about you and what you can produce. As long as you're confident in it, you should be able to use this to your advantage. And kind of to wrap this whole thing up, a lot of my jobs nowadays come from other people, if that makes absolutely any sense. I've basically scaled my business to the point where people are being recommended to me and I'm getting reached out to. And at that point, it just comes to being able to manage your time and schedule really well. So now that I finished answering the questions, I just wanna get into a little bit of a story time on how I got to where I am right now. It's taken a lot of hard work and eight years, so I feel like this is an interesting enough story for you guys to sit down and listen to. So grab some chips, grab some sodi, sit your ass down and listen to the story. Oh my God, he needs to quit right now because Juju's on the beat. So I started this YouTube channel in 2014. If I'm not wrong, I'm pretty sure the date's July 19th or something like that. First video I ever uploaded was an indie game montage with like literally this guy that I was dating at the time. Isn't that so fucking ugly? Me and him would make a lot of YouTube videos together. I was still in middle school at the time, so these videos were like kind of cringy but yeah i basically uploaded gaming content for the first few years um from that indie game montage i went to making call of duty montages because you know i'm i'm like that i'm like that on the sticks then i made call of duty cut comms because you know the little phase fan girl that i am i had to just absolutely copy what they were doing then from there i transitioned to making like irl vlog content because again that's exactly what phase was doing but now we're in high school all right let's fast forward a little bit i was vlogging a whole lot more because i thought my life was way more interesting than me sitting down and telling a story about my life while playing video games. The summer going into senior year, I had started freelance video editing. I worked really closely with FaZe Sensor for the next little while and curating content for his YouTube channel. And senior year is really where things started to take off. I did a 72 hour live stream with G Fuel, which really sparked everything. From there though, I used my connection with Cliff at G Fuel to then get my job at Wild Bills. I asked Cliff basically if G Fuel was hiring and he was like unfortunately no but I have this great opportunity for you so I worked with Wild Bills and I still work with Wild Bills since 2020 and the first thing I ever did for them was right after my job interview my boss texted me and was like hey are you free this weekend and I was like yeah and then he bought me a train ticket to Boston to go to Paxi's now picture this ready I decided you know what bangs we're gonna cut bangs into my head today so we done did that and later that day we were like you know what let's let's hit let's hit the city and for no good reason I met Giancarlo there. He drove past me in his car and I was like, I think that's Blazendary's car. So I done ran up to the car and I was like, hey, are you Blazendary? And from there, I started editing content for Giancarlo's Pokemon channel. Then the summer came along and that kind of died out and I was back to doing freelance editing and working with Wild Bills. And as you guys know, I started traveling for Wild Bills a little bit more. Fast forward to now and I still work with Blazendary. I still work with Wild Bills, but I just got another job. I know what you guys are thinking. How do you literally have time in your week to do that? Time fucking management, folks. That's all it takes. That's all it literally takes. I promise. So yeah, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that new job, I would definitely check out the vlog that I'm going to be uploading this Friday. You're not going to want to miss it. I literally got the new job in the vlog, so it's kind of kooky. It's kind of crazy. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope I answered all your questions adequately, and I hope you guys enjoyed that little story time on how I really got to where I am today. Like I said, I have a brand new vlog dropping on Friday and it's actually a very interesting one. Me, Mikey, and Anthony hit the city and I got that new job and yeah. we went shopping and stuff like that. So Friday, 4.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Set an alarm, set an alert, set it on your calendar, whatever the fuck you have to do to remind yourself. But also follow my social medias at Juju Who 
boo.b slash juju for me to check out all of my social medias but yeah that's gonna be it for today's video guys like i said before thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my content it literally means the world to me but yeah i'll catch you guys in my next video damn me the fuck up